Hello, and welcome once again to Lato's Law. I'm Steve Lato, attorney at law in the state of Michigan. I've been practicing law for 24 years in the fields of consumer protection and lemon law. I often write about this stuff for places like Jalopnik, Opposite Lock, and Road and Track. And today we're going to talk about driving a tow truck. I used to drive a tow truck years ago. And in fact, if you go way back in Lato's Law, episode 11, which is so old there's no video for it, just an audio, I talk about some uh, memorable stories when I used to drive a tow truck for the city of Birmingham. And uh, we had a contract at the gas station I worked at with the city of Birmingham. Whenever the police needed a vehicle towed, they'd call us. And overnight, I was off and on call. So I'd often get a phone call, three, four, five o'clock in the morning to go tow some vehicle from somebody whose <laughs> night was just ending. And my day would begin with their uh, wrecked vehicle. So. I told some stories before in that episode, but I've got some more. I was talking to somebody recently about driving a tow truck, and it's kind of funny because I realized, wait, I've got more stories. I've got, I've got a lot of stories. These are all true examples of things that I encountered while driving a tow truck in the city of Birmingham back before I went to law school. In fact, this is back before I went to college, so this is a while back. So for instance, I'm in bed sleeping at home one night and the phone rings. I used to keep the phone next to my bed so it wouldn't wake up the rest of the people in the house. And I answered and of course it's the dispatcher from the city of Birmingham and she says, hey, there's an accident at uh, Brown Road and uh, she gives me an intersection in downtown Birmingham. I forgot the intersection. But there's a, a, a ladies department store that used to be there. It's not there anymore. I don't think ladies department stores exist anymore. But anyways, so I, I, you know, I get up, I get dressed, I go to the gas station, pick up the wrecker, I drive the wrecker over there, and it's a one-car accident. And a lot of the vehicles I towed, it turns out, were one-car accidents. It turns out if you drink a ton late at night, and then you get in your car while inebriated, you'll occasionally find yourself parked in your car either up against a telephone pole or against a building. And I actually towed several vehicles that hit buildings, and also several vehicles that hit telephone poles and trees, and, you know, this is stuff that happens on dry pavement in the summertime. I mean, this is not, you know, <laughs> it's, it is amazing how badly you can drive when you're drunk. So, I get there and this car has driven right through the big display window in front of the department store. And I'm talking about, there's a big window, they've got mannequins in there. And this guy has managed to hit the window, but he hit it right at the edge. So, you know, there's a, you know, think about the window frame around a big gigantic glass window and he hit the edge and the edge was a brick wall, little bricks, not cinder blocks, but little bricks. And so I, I walk up there and I'm looking at the scene and there's a cop there and they're hauling a guy off in handcuffs. And I, so I talked to one of the officers, I said, hey, I got a problem. And he goes, what's that? And I said, I noticed the way the car is jammed into that window, that the wall is leaning over the hood and the windshield. I said, the second I go to pull that car out of the wall is going to fall on it. And the guy looks at me and goes, so what? <laughs> I said, well, I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> because once in a while, the damage is not done to the vehicle completely at the time of the accident. Some of it's done by the tow truck driver, but we couldn't help it. We had to do something. So I hooked up a cable to this guy's car. I'm not going to actually hook the truck up to it until I know that I've got it extricated from the building. And so I hook a cable up to the guy's car and I start winching the vehicle out. And sure enough, after I pull it about six inches, all of a sudden the whole wall just falls on the car, takes out all the glass, smashes the hood beyond recognition and uh, pieces of the roof. And I go over there and I kind of pick up the bricks and toss them on the sidewalk. Then I hook the car up and I tow it, tow it away. So, you know, that's a drunk driver hitting a department store front window with his, uh, with his vehicle. Now, once in a while, I, I would see some other unusual things. I mean, your typical story of a, of a vehicle that I'm towing late at night is just two cars that hit each other. Somebody runs a stop sign, they run a red light, uh, they bump into somebody, they rear end somebody. And obviously, if I'm being called, a vehicle is not drivable. That's why I'm being called. And so I got called once, and this was a, actually a, a tow that I had to do during the day. It was, it was right around rush hour. Just uh, west of downtown Birmingham, there's a big hill and as the traffic comes into Birmingham from that direction, there's often a big backup on that hill. And some guy driving a work van had rear-ended somebody else. And um, it was kind of a bizarre little accident because this, this, this van didn't look undrivable until you drove up to it and you saw that something had happened when the impact took place that caused the transmission to bust and dump all its trans fluid all over the ground. I mean, I'm talking about it looked like gallons of trans fluid. Now, you might know this, but 
transmission fluid and automatic transmission is often bright red. Okay, it depends on how old it is and so on, but it's red. That's the color of trans fluid. So this guy's work van is on the side of the road and all this trans fluid is leaking out from underneath it and it's running across the road and it's, and it's red. <laughs> And the driver of the vehicle was in front of the van, sitting on the curb with his head in his hands, probably upset because he realized he was going to get in a lot of trouble because he smashed the company van. But I noticed as I was walking around kind of taking my inventory and figuring out how I'm going to hook this vehicle up and get it out of here without causing much more of a disruption to the evening's uh, commute, that people were driving by and they'd see that red streak in the road and they'd get this horrified look in their face and they'd like, oh, and they'd drive by really slowly. And I realized people thought it was blood. <laughs> and it looked kind of like blood, but there's, you know, think about it. How are you going to get a couple gallons of blood in the middle of the road at a car accident? I mean, you know, possibly, I suppose, if you hit a bunch of people, you might get a couple gallons of blood. But this is clearly running out from underneath the vehicle. It was transmission fluid. But I'm telling you, the look on these people's faces, priceless, priceless. Because I, I realize these people are like, oh my gosh, and they're all going to go home and say, I saw the bloodiest accident today. And no, no, no. That's transmission fluid, my friend. Now... Most of the vehicles I saw smashed were not that ugly, okay? Many of them were simply just bent up a little bit. Occasionally, I would see some gruesome things, though. And I don't want to get really gruesome on this, on this uh, podcast. But I will tell you that, that one time I towed a, a little sports car. And I, I, I forgot what it was. But a little sports car from another country. <laughs> so you can guess it's European, I guess. I'm not sure where else a little sports car from another country would come from. And... Um, this uh, guy was driving along. I still remember exactly where it was, too. It's on, on, on 16 Mile Road, which, which in Oakland County is called Big Beaver. I kid you not. Big Beaver Road. And uh, that's a running joke. In, in much of the Midwest, people realize there's a road called Big Beaver Road uh, in Michigan. And it is exit 69 off of I-75. Again, I kid you not. Uh, but this guy was driving along on Big Beaver Road. And this, again, is kind of towards rush hour. And so he stopped to make a left-hand turn, but where he was, the road was two lanes, one lane each direction. So he's stopping to make a left-hand turn, and, and so everyone's got to stop behind him. Well, the guy behind him didn't stop. And now, one of the things that they should tell you in driver's ed, and I don't even know if they have driver's ed anymore. I, I, I know some places do, some places don't. One thing you need to tell young drivers is, when you're going to make a left-hand turn, don't turn the wheel until you're ready to go. And this guy came to a stop, and he cranked the wheel all the way to the left, preparing for the turn. But he wasn't ready to go because the oncoming traffic hadn't broken yet. So while he's completely stopped with his wheels cranked to the left, some guy behind him, not paying attention, plows into him from behind. And he, him being in a little foreign vehicle gets pushed into oncoming traffic because the wheel's being cranked all the way to the left. When he gets rear-ended, his car proceeds to turn left. He didn't want it to go left, but it did. And when his car went left, an oncoming car just plowed into him. So it was a head-on collision. And the little foreign sports car was not going very fast at all, but the oncoming car was. And now, this little foreign sports car didn't have an airbag in it, because a lot of cars back then didn't. That's how old I am. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, this driver, when he got rear-ended, wasn't prepared for it. So he got rear-ended, and then he got head on and his car got basically smashed at both ends. And I don't know if he's wearing a seatbelt. I don't think he was, though, because when I towed the vehicle, uh, we were looking at it, and we found the gentleman's teeth lodged in the front dashboard dash. There's a little pad there. The guy's teeth were stuck in that dashboard. I kid you not. You know? And I remember you know, I, I towed it in. It's a little bit of blood on the dashboard, and me and my friends were kind of standing around. We'd often stand there and, and, and critique the uh, car accidents. You know, what is, you know, what happened here and how could it have been avoided and, oh, how sad it is this car got wrecked. And uh, I go, yeah, yeah, guys, there's, there's blood in the dashboard. And my friends all look in there and one of the guys goes, hey, what's that sticking out of the dashboard? And sure enough, it's, it was uh, one of the gentleman's front teeth. And I believe he actually left two teeth in the car. So that, I suppose, is a lesson as to why you don't turn your wheels <laughs> before you're ready to turn. I actually think about that accident. Almost every time I'm driving, when I'm going to make a left-hand turn, I always think, don't turn your wheel yet. Don't do it. You don't want to put your teeth in your dashboard. Now, I had another interesting accident involving a person getting injured in a car. And this, again, is one where 
if, if you've ever seen what it looks like when somebody hits their forehead on a windshield, it's a very distinctive pattern of broken glass. So if you're ever walking through a junkyard, look at the windshields of cars and you can see the ones where people's heads hit the windshields. Now, I think this is becoming less common with airbags because I think airbags will keep you from doing that. But in the old days, you would often see that where there'd be an impact mark on the inside of the windshield and then there'd be a big shatter mark where the windshield cracked because somebody had, in an accident, hit their head on the windshield. So I got a phone call again late at night, you know, and the cop, you know, dispatcher goes, come on down here, there'll be police officers waiting for you. There's a, a car in this front yard. And I said, a car in the front yard? Huh, okay. So I go down there, and these people who live near Court and Lake, for those of you who are local, <laughs> there's a, a drive that goes by the, the east side of Court and Lake, and people along there are very, very upset about all the gawkers who drive by the lake late at night uh, and, and hang out in the park after hours. And so there's a, there's a family that had a house right near a curve in that road, and they were sick of people driving over their lawn. So they had put a berm there, a big earthen berm. That's a big, basically, mountain, uh, a, a miniature mountain, five feet tall, maybe, of dirt. They'd covered it with grass and flowers, and they planted a tree on top of it. But there's a berm right there in their front yard, and that berm is designed to protect their yard from idiots driving over it. Well, this young guy comes flying around that corner, and I can still remember the car's little Omni Horizon, one of those little, it's the smallest, junkiest car Chrysler ever built. I, I don't know if they're built in Japan and rebadged, or if they're built in a shop class someplace in Yugoslavia and rebadged. I mean, these things are garbage, okay? It was a little garbagey car. You could probably walk over and just tip it over if you wanted to. I mean, really tiny little piece of junk car. They were designed to be disposable. And the, when I got to the scene, this car is beached up on this berm. And the guy was driving around the corner, and he, he missed the corner and hit the berm. And the good news, of course, is the berm did its job. The berm was designed to keep people from <laughs> driving with impunity over these people's front lawn or hitting their house. And so I get to the scene, and I see a, a, a guy talking to a police officer. And I walk over, the, I always, you know, checked in with the police to let him know I'm there. And I say, hi, I'm here, you know. I assume this is the vehicle you want me to tow, and the guy goes, yeah, 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 and I go, I go do you want me to tow it or simply dislodge it? And he goes, no, 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 Dis he goes, go ahead and tow it. He goes, this, this guy's drunk, we're taking him in. And I said, okay, cool. And then uh, I, I, I go to take the vehicle out of gear to make sure I can yank it off the berm, and um, I notice that there's two impacts on the windshield. There's one for the driver, one for the passenger. Two people hit their heads on the windshield that night. So I, I, I look over the police officer, and he's only talking to one guy. And I look around and I do an inventory and there's a missing person. So I walk over to the police officer and say, excuse me, sir, can I talk to you for just a moment? He goes, yeah, come on. So I, I go, where's the passenger? And he goes, what passenger? And I go, you're missing a person. I go, there was a person in the passenger seat of this car. And the officer goes, oh my gosh, you're right. I mean, there's no question. Two people smashed their heads in the windshield that night. And, you know, there's no question that the guy he's talking to who's got a smashed forehead is one of them, but there's one other person missing. So he goes over to the driver, he goes, excuse me, where's your passenger? And the guy goes, I, I didn't have a pa I, I had no passenger. I had no passenger. No, 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 I was all alone. The police officer goes, look, son, we know there's someone missing. There was someone in the passenger seat of your car who's probably suffering from a head injury. Where are they right now? He goes, I don't, I, I know, I was all alone. And the guy was panicking. There was clearly something going on that caused his passenger to run away. It could be the passenger was also drunk. It could be that the guy that the cops are talking to was the passenger and the driver ran away. But we don't know. But there were two people in that car. Only one of them stuck around to take the blame for the accident. And to this day, I don't know. For all I know, the passenger got out of the car, ran 100 yards, and died in a bush. I mean, I don't know. It's just the weirdest thing. And I'm thinking to myself, there's someone out there right now, someone out there, who needs medical attention and has fled the scene of an injury accident, probably because they don't want to get in trouble. And whether it's trouble with their parents, trouble with the police, trouble with who knows, I don't know. But there was someone missing from that accident. So those are true stories from driving a tow truck, and uh, I hope you enjoyed them. Questions or comments, as always, shoot them my way, latoslaw.com, L-E-H-T-O-S-L-A-W.com. I'm on Twitter, at Steve Leto, at S-T-E-V-E-L-E-H-T-O. And this show is on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Podbean, Google Play, and YouTube. Thanks for watching and listening.
拜拜。